Hi everyone, this is another update on the houseboat build and as you saw in my previous video the uh, pontoons have been uh, the fiberglass cloth has been laid on them and once the fiberglass gets uh, merged with resin this is what it looks like the half of the floor was done and now the other half of the floor uh, has been done and also here is the resin that has been also applied to the pontoon and all this looks like it doesn't have anything on it anymore but truly it does the uh, fiberglass cloth is there it's just that once the uh, resin has been applied it becomes pretty well see-through so you can now see all once again <coughs> the fiber the uh, plywood there and the sections of foam in between and uh, you can even see on the bottom there the darker line uh, that is that four inch cloth that is on an angle to merge the floor section to the uh, side of the pontoon section fiberglass there so this turned out pretty good um, this is all new territory for me I've never done a job of this kind I've got experience working with fiberglass and epoxies and other resins and uh, I, I'm I actually learning stuff with this so here I stopped my uh, process uh, at this point here I just uh, ran out of time and uh, that section there will be done uh, afterwards and I'm also uh, finding out that wherever you stop the job at one point uh, it doesn't give you a really good effect to continue on the resin because as you can see here this area of the cloth is uh, not going to be able to absorb the uh, next batch of resin and I think I've come up with a solution how to uh, fix that and uh, probably a lot of you are also wondering how I was able to get the resin on the uh, vertical plane on the side here of the pontoons and uh, I'll show you the technique that I've devised for doing that so here on this uh, pontoon section you can see uh, that was by the way the front bow that had the three layers on it uh, I was able to even get that uh, very nicely wet and uh, I'll show you how I was able to do that and if we follow down here again we see that white line that's where I had stopped and then I continued this whole section I did uh, without uh, stopping so that was all done one evening that was very uh, cool and I was able to do uh, one two three uh, I think about four yeah four uh, four foot sections and uh, that was a very productive night but this here is a problem and what I'll have to do is basically grind that down and just uh, redo the uh, fiberglass at uh, those areas there and I'll have most likely the same problem over there so let me show you of the way that I've come up to be able to uh, have to hold the resin on this uh, vertical plane here and if we go on this side here where the uh, fiberglass cloth is on there and no resin has been poured you can see here I've put a plastic sheet so this is six mil uh, vapor barrier uh, that's used in construction and here on the bottom you see that there's a board and that board have these shims that are placed on each end of it and this board is connected to another one which is resting against this side of the pontoon so which is well anchored so basically I'm using pressure on this board here to push against the fiberglass cloth which um, <coughs> causes a trap basically so once I have the resin mixed I pour it down this plastic it kind of just falls pretty well down to the bottom there and then with a large uh, trowel I just trowel up the resin and 
the more I keep working it, the more the cloth starts absorbing that resin. And nothing is spilt out. Everything is contained behind this uh, plastic sheet. So it's a bit like a vacuum bagging process, if people are familiar with that. Uh, that's also used, but there is no vacuum created. It's just basically, uh, you know, the, the effect of a fluid uh, in contact sandwich between two pieces, two layers, it just finds its way. And that's the way I was able to do that, and it works uh, very well. And uh, even at the front bow here, I thought I would have uh, problems with those uh, third layer that I added there. And as you see on the other side here, I was able to do it uh, no problem. And if you look down there, I've got a piece that contours all uh, the exact shape of the uh, bow there. And that's on the other side. I'll give you a shot of the other side. So here's the front view of this. And it's just basically a half inch uh, uh, oriented strand board that I'm using, or aspenite if you want. And that I've just pieced together and you know made the shape to fit you know exactly around that bow so this this piece what I'm trying to tell you is under compression so here if you look at the front I've got this piece of wood here and it's attached to the table so basically I've got these screws that I can tighten and it pushes this into the nose of the uh, of the bow and therefore puts a pressure on the edge here so that's what, that's what creates that trap, so that when you pour the resin, it stops at this point here and doesn't continue to flow uh, underneath on this side here. Because I want to keep this glass uh, unwet. I want this to uh, stay like this, and this will be used to merge the uh, wall system. Once the wall system is put into place, then uh, and only then will I wet that with the fiberglass. So here, you see again that system where there's a screw that pulls this piece into the table and that creates the pressure on the edge. So basically the whole length of the edge, it's the whole, that's the way I do it. I have these tensioners that just pull that right against the edge. So again, that's just so that the fiberglass uh, resin or the polyester resin stops at this point here and doesn't drop down. And this is a, div div you know, a, a system that I've come up with to, uh, to uh, deal with this situation. And that's what you've got to kind of do. You've got to come up with ideas of ways of doing something that normally isn't done. Now what I also have come up with that will prevent that problem that you saw on the other side where I have that white uh, band there of when I stop doing the job where I stop the resin and then continue on later uh, I found a way as well from utilizing this system it gave me an idea to do the same on this horizontal plane and this plane here. So what I've done is I've put some wax paper on this edge of this board and then this board's under compression as well on the work here and here. So when I spread my resin here it'll do the same thing. It'll harden just on the edge here pressed against the wood underneath and it'll be able to make a nice stop line of the resin and then when I continue on on the work then it, uh, it won't do that white line. It'll be uh, much, much cleaner than that. And I'll go around to the other side and show you how good this uh, compression system works here. So this is how I did this side as well. So obviously this is all resin. And then I had that whole board system that you saw on the other side that's under pressure here. And look how quick, uh, look how straight, sorry, that line is and uh, so all this cloth here is is still you know has not been wet you know and then it makes a really nice 
flat straight surface as well so whenever I wet this this cloth you will hardly see the transition point uh, between this work that has been finished and then the continuation so that's something that uh, is worth uh, sharing and anybody that is working uh, with projects that are very large like this and need to be able I'm giving you a continuous shot here of the whole line to be able to uh, do your work in different parts because it takes a lot of time for the resin to merge into the cloth and there's only so many hours you can work at this so actually to do the resin from this point to over there which is 12 feet that took about uh, eight hours to do so you know yeah and then your hand is just you know so tired at that point you just can't continue on and uh, basically I had just put the board right up to that point anyway so I hadn't done the uh, the wood here to to stop the resin so that's why I had to also stop if I would have known it would have went so well I would have had it all the way to the end and then you know it's best to if you can do the whole process in one one time but like I say it's just so many hours of work that it's uh, very difficult uh, to do so here you can see as well on the front bow here where my wood was uh, a little bit of slippage there but uh, in general it's uh, good and obviously nothing came down all the way here so that's an interesting system and I thought I would uh, share that uh, with you and uh, you can have a better understanding of how I'm doing this so obviously I've got this piece already and now I'm just waiting for the correct uh, cool night to be able to start again right now it's uh, totally wet here it's just been raining it was a cool evening but just too humid and uh, now I have to wait for the next cool evening but meanwhile I thought that I would share this uh, technique here that I've uh, devised it can uh, help a lot on uh, working uh, to get resin impregnated on the uh, fiberglass on a vertical plane and then well as well you know this uh, system here where you can stop your work and then continue on you know days after even if has, it has hardened and uh, still be able to not have that uh, effect over there on the other side but that's not a big deal I can fix that but you know that saves to build this uh, saves time that uh, compared to uh, needing to redo that little s section there this was a lot easier to do to build this uh, system here so that's the update for now at this time and uh, I think the uh, next uh, update video you'll obviously see the uh, whole pontoons uh, all finished uh, with the uh, fiberglass and actually I'll be uh, starting to uh, do the uh, paint at that time as well so we're getting close and uh, once it's painted then the next thing would be to flip this over and start working the floor and the wall sections and all, all that so thanks for uh, your interest